Hey everyone, Jason from No Code VA. We're just going to do a short video on how you can use Typeform um, and, and use automation with Typeform. And we're going to specifically look at using hidden fields in Typeform and how you might do that and why you might do that. So hidden fields are not exclusive to Typeform. They're used in a lot of form-based services and a lot of systems. And it's just a way of passing information um, that's hidden from the user. Um, and there's a few reasons why you might do that. And we're just going to have a look at a couple of them in this video. So uh, let's jump straight in. OK, so we're looking at a template here um, from Typeform. It's just a basic template. It has three questions in it um, and it's built around referring a friend. So if you have a service um, that you provide and then you want to um, pass to your customers um, options to refer friends and things like that. So this is what it's based on. But again, these hidden fields can be used for in any forms and for particular reasons. So if we look at what we have, we have recommend a friend and we click on here and then we put the name in and we ask for their email address and then we click, click submit and then that's it, we, we, we have the information. So that's how it is at the moment and we're gonna make some modifications to this. So if we look at what we have, so we have the display over here, um, and then we have the questions here that we're going to create. So there's the questions we just looked at. And we're going to add another question in here. So we click on add. And we have all the options that you'd expect in there for different types of questions that you might expect. Um, but right at the bottom here, you have hidden fields. And this is what we're looking for. So if we click on here, um, we um, it gives us an option at the top to create some hidden fields. So all we're going to do at the moment is just give them names. So they're just values. So we're going to have one called names or name, and we're going to have one called refer code. Okay, these don't matter what, what you call them. Um, they're not going to be seen. So what we can do then, we can put some test data in here. So we can put bill in here and we can create a refer code of anything for now. And that's it, we've got these values in here. So to make this a bit more personal now, we can change the information that we have in the questions so we can add names in. So if you think about what we're doing here, imagine you have a hundred people that you want to send this to all in one go. Well, you can put these hidden fields in and then you can use MailChimp to um, send to all of your subscribers and you could then replace um, this name field that we've got here with the name that you have in MailChimp. And we're going to look at how you can do that um, in a more basic way, just so you get the idea. But this is the concept that you're trying to send something to lots of people. Uh, you want to personalize it and also the unique code that you're going to give them to refer friends wants to be unique to that person. OK, so we know who's provided the code. So what we can do to start with, instead of saying, hey, um, Let's make it more personal and let's use their name. So we can just click the at symbol and we can choose name from the field. So now you'll see down here, because of the information we have, we're saying Bill, you rock. OK, so it's a bit more um, personalized. And then maybe down at the bottom here, we may want to use the name again. So again, we can do that there. And we also may want to just um, give them a refer code at the bottom here. So we can say, we'll drop drop them an email. And by the way, here's a code you can pass to friends. And then we want to give them their unique code. So again, we click here and we choose refer code. So now we have a unique code. Let's just put some quotes around that to make it, uh, make it stand out a little bit more. And then maybe make that bold as well. OK, so now we have that information and it looks a little bit different. Um, so we've got the name and we've got the refer code. So what we can do now, we can publish that. And if you see what's happened here. So this URL here is the URL for the form. The rest of it is going to contain the fields that we want to pass into the form. So if we just look at how this looks, if we just go to this bit of the form, then it has no name or anything like that in there. So it's not personalized. If we go to this part of the form, we can see we have, we've gone to the form, we have Bill because we have the information up here. So that means that all we have to do is create a link that's the same up until here 
and then it adds these personalized bits on. And this is where in MailChimp or MailerLite, you would use the first name field in there and then you would use your code in there. And then you can send a unique link to everybody in the group. So if we go over to here, so we're looking at Airtable here. So you could use, this could be a spreadsheet. Um, we're gonna use Airtable, um, well, because it's much better than spreadsheets, but um, it will work just the same for this idea. So we have name in here and we have a referral code. And if we skip to the end, we have the link to the form. So this is just the basic link that contains no information at all. And then all we've done is we've used, um, we've used a formula to take that link and then add these fields into it. If we look at how that looks, it's just a concatenate. If you're familiar with Excel or Google Sheets, then we're just adding fields together to make up this complete form here. So this is a unique form for this very person. So if I was to create another um, user in here, then the refer code is being created automatically for me. That's another formula we'll look at another time. But what's also happened is the link here has been created for me. And if I click on that, then I'm gonna see Jane, and this is specific to Jane. And if I went through it all, um, Um, I'll just put an email address in here. Then I will see this unique code that's been created just for Jane, and this is the one that was represented here. So this is how you would do it, um, and, and these are two of the reasons why that would be useful. Okay, so now we have that. Um, this could now be used to our automation. So it means every time we add something in here, then we could use Zapier to send the um, send the form to the person who he's, whose email address is in here and send them a very specific link for them. Um, so that's very powerful. And that's just a beginning. There's lots of things you can do with um, these hidden fields. And maybe um, when we have some time, we'll explore a few different ways of using them as well. So I hope that's useful to you. If you have any questions, um, please let me know and I'll do my best to help you. Thanks for listening.